not too tired. Thank you very much. Dear brothers and sisters, I am very happy and honored to be here among you in New York, the big city. We arrived uh, late and we just come uh, immediately to here in this beautiful uh, feast of Saint Nicholas, the patron of your church. Uh, I would like to share with you uh, not as a, an oracle, but as the expression of what we have been living and experiencing in Syria. At the end of the, the day, only prayer will be the right answer. Nevertheless, every day you have bloodshed in Syria and atrocities are summing to other atrocities. Among them, the terrible fate of our sisters, the nuns of Ma'lula. Just before coming here, in the airport of Toronto, I could talk for four minutes with Mother Hajji Pelagia. Because in the frame of our action of reconciliation, we have ties with everybody and uh, we could uh, for two days have talks with the Free Syrian Army and they introduced us to Jubhat uh, al-Nusra, a kind of Al-Qaeda, and uh, the Emir of the Jubhat al-Nusra, the Emir of Kalamun, it means the Prince of Kalamun of the Islamic Caliphate, uh, he accepted to give the telephone to Mother Pelagia. You could see in Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera they took her just one hour before I could talk to her. And uh, you can see that they obliged the sister to take off their crosses. For us, it's a sign. Mother Pelagia could not talk freely. She just said that they are fine that uh, the, the ophthalmologue, the doctor of the ears, came because they had problems and that uh, they hope to go back to the patriarchate after two days. But uh, when I heard, I, I recorded uh, the conversation, we could note that uh, our conversation was under heavy hearing. Some, many people were hearing us, so she could not talk. And uh, we have the... Con we, are, we are really convic convinced that it is an abduction even though the sisters, they are not saying it, it is a real abduction. Because yesterday, the same mediator reported to me as a spokesperson of uh, Jubhat al-Nusra that they were abducted because uh, they want the, the army to withdraw from a stronghold that uh, they uh, have uh, taken, which is Kara, and also they want the army to dismantle a uh, what uh, where, what is the a cannon? Should, should be some uh, uh, matfa. Should be some matfa. 
a cannon. And also they want the, the army to take off the cannon that uh, is installed in the Kerubi monastery, a uh, strategic uh, peak uh, in uh, Saitai. In all cases, uh, please pray for our sisters. Now this drama is to be added to the drama of the two bishops and to the drama of the two priests and to the drama that now I will propose you to look with me if there is anything to be added with your questions and answer we will try to have a better uh, a better uh, approach a better approach now normally i do not repeat what the mainstream media are saying the day long since three years it's not my uh, I, I i don't i will not waste my time to repeat what the mainstream media are saying. But what I want to uh, transmit is the point of view of the population that is not involved, that is not really involved in a political uprising. And please note this difference. So, I will propose to you this uh, uh, PowerPoint concerning a third way, breakthrough in the Syrian crisis. Uh, you know that uh, everything began in Syria, uh, in Dara, south of Syria, with demonstrations. Our monastery is uh, 90 kilometers north of Damascus. It is a 6th century monastery that was in ruin. We restored it beginning of uh, 1994. And in 2000, we have a community, nuns and also monks, but they live in uh, another place, in the same big, uh, you know, uh, emplacement. And uh, our community is uh, from eight nationalities. They decided to remain in Syria as a sign of solidarity with the Syrian people. Uh, we, we, were, we were involved with the Syrian population in uh, the events because, you know, a monastery is like a big family. We are to serve the people around us. And here you see the women of Kara, our village. Uh, they are asking me to promote their cause with, uh, you know, they put uh, their uh, print, fingerprint, uh, to ask the government to liberate their sons that were in jail because of freedom of expression, of political expression. The Syrian crisis was very quickly subject to inter-violences. And I will show you now a picture. A man in Nebek, 30 kilometers nearby us, he was chastised because he is an employee in the government as an example for the whole agglomeration. They entered, they took him from his family and they throw him from the window. He died. The problem is that it was not the, the good person. It was an error. But he, nevertheless, he died. So we had on a, a popular ground, even far from this rivalry between demonstration and oppression, we had to face an ongoing 
violence that was not uh, covered by the mainstream media. The Syrian uprising is not only interior affair. It has, uh, the, since the beginning, it has been helped and fueled by porous frontiers and uh, many things wa was happening through uh, Lebanon, Turkey, Iraq and Jordan. Now, uh, very quickly, I want to just show you this ongoing domestic terror that nobody was pointing uh, in the mainstream media. And when I talk about it, uh, it comes like, uh, you know, uh, something that is not real. But I can assure you that uh, it was the fate, and it is the fate, the everyday fate of the civilian population. So I decided to go to Homs. I spent one night and one day, the 5th of December, 2011. Uh, excuse me if there are some graphic pictures, but when I see it, I will immediately take it off. So I went uh, to the uh, center of Homs, and uh, from uh, the Bustan at Diwan, uh, where we have a school, the Sankar school, we just, you know, walked, passing by Ozon, if there is somebody here from Homs, Wadi Sayyah, and then arriving to the National Hospital. So, look, what we witnessed this very day, our following hour. At nine o'clock in the breakfast, the sister supervising the school is saying, in homes it is war every day. Of course, all this fate was not covered by the media. Nobody would know about it. Now, we, you know, things that are happening, abduction, raping, but before nobody was talking about this. In the courtyard of the sister school, the classes are almost or totally empty because of fear that retain the student at home. This woman is saying there are areas with terrorists. They plant bombs and they kill people. Uh, you see that it is a video. Uh, I, I have this video because I was with a reporter and this video we just leave it as an evidence for the history. So we entered in the teacher's room and here a Sunni teacher is saying I just heard from our inspector this morning he got a telephone call a taxi with teachers from Fadwa to Khan school have been hijacked. His wife is among the teachers, so also abduction. This other teacher is saying, my sister-in-law's house is in Ozon, near Wadi Sayyah. There is no Syrian army there. Armed men come and they shoot savagely. They are shooting everybody. Christian, Muslims, they shoot us, myself and my son near St. George School. You see, this uh, terror, we don't know who was doing it. And we decided to call those people unidentified armed gangs. It means that we are not cited when we just express or we describe this situation. Uh, yesterday at 2 o'clock, people came from Wadi Sayyah, they reported, Killed people are laying on the ground. Nine killed men in Wadi Sayyid. If the army was there, this would not have happened. This woman is saying Wadi Sayyid is no more called Wadi Valley Al Sayyid of the pilgrim, but Wadi Al Jusas, Valley of the Corpses. 
because there are every day many slaughtering there. And she continues, my sister lived between Babsba and Babdraib. Armed gangs entered to their building without their permission at night. They broke the door and used their location to aggress the army. Since then, my sister and her family left their home and the house received at least 10 bullets. So we decided to go because this teacher, a Sunni teacher, she wanted to show me how her house had, has been targeted by a shelling. You just notice how the streets are almost empty. You have garbage everywhere. And uh, I made it short, but uh, we see many things uh, going, uh, by, uh, going down Ozon Street. Uh, in, at the end of Wadi Sayyah, we saw a blood puddle on the left. Here, nine Alawites were beheaded just one day before. And they were beheaded on this edge. <coughs> We continued and we passed by the famous school of Yusuf Azmi after it was attacked by armed gangs, like so many schools, it was closed. And uh, they gave us 